Hey there! Based on the fact that you clicked on this video, I can tell that you wanna get rich quick and you aren't the only one. I think I also read somewhere that blockchain hard equals money. Well, let's see if Python can help us buy our first Lambo. But first, we must ask ourselves, what even is a blockchain? Luckily for us, I'm addicted to internet and read an article that explains that. So here is my brief introduction for you. A blockchain is a chain of blocks. In its most basic form, each block store some arbitrary data and something that's called hash. This hash is created by a mathematical function which takes data of arbitrary length as input and produces an output which always has the exact same length and this output is called hash. Now there are a bunch of hashing functions to pick from. A popular choice is SHA-256. I found a pretty neat website which allows us to see the result of this hashing function in real time. The input data for this function of each block is the arbitrary data that the block holds plus the hash of the previous block. And this connection to the previous block is what makes the blockchain a chain. What this connection allows is that if any of the blocks change, this affects all blocks that came after it. This property allows us to verify if a particular block in the chain is valid or not. Okay, enough of that. Let's make some money. Uh, I mean, let's look at how to actually implement what we just talked about. The code we'll be looking at today is based based on a small library called just blockchain. I basically just removed external dependencies and added the basic for loop which prints out the blockchain at the end of the file. Alright, so right off the bat we have a definition of a block. And as you can see it's literally just a python's way of implementing a struct. There are a bunch of fields in this block but the important ones are just previous hash and hash. Almost everything else can be considered arbitrary data. I mean technically the arbitrary data is just the data here and all these fields together with Without the hash are called a block's header. Okay, we have a block, now we need a chain. Below the block is a definition of the class that implements just what we need. First, in the constructor of the block, we initialize something that's called difficulty bits, more on that in a sec, and we initialize our chain as a list of blocks. We populate it with a single block which is called a genesis block. The genesis block is actually just a predefined block and we implement it in this method right here. The next thing we need is a way of adding blocks to the chain. This here is one of the few public methods on this class. So the only thing this method receives is some user provided data and we handle everything else internally. This method creates a new block with this data and appends it to the end of the chain. If we look at the one method below this one we can see how the block is actually being created. Essentially we just gather data that's required for the block creation, like the previous block, the next index, timestamp and so on. The important step that happens here is the hash calculation. We look into how the hash actually gets calculated in a bit, but for now just notice which data is passed to the hash calculating method. Basically all the fields gathered so far plus the arbitrary data that's provided by the user. So once we have all these fields we just create a new block with them and return it. So now for the interesting part. How do we calculate the hash? If we scroll down a bit we'll find the method that takes care of this. And it's actually the method we called earlier. For now let's just ignore this if condition here and look at everything else. What's happening is that we basically combine all input data in a single string called header and then pass it to the SHA-256 hashing function which takes care of all the work and produces a string called hash value which we return from the function. Phew! I hope that wasn't too much to take in. Now let's scroll down to the bottom of the file where I prepared a simple program that utilizes the blockchain. Nothing fancy here just create a new instance of the blockchain, add 5 blocks to it and then print these blocks out. Now let's try to run our script. Nice! Our blockchain works as expected. One thing if you notice is that even though technically our blockchain is deterministic, if we run the script multiple times, all hashes except the genesis block are different. The reason for this is that we use the current timestamp as one of the inputs to the hashing function. So now we go to the Lamborghini website and whoa 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 not so fast. Our blockchain has one slight problem. The problem is that even though our chain can be used to verify intermediate blocks, you could still change the genesis block and fake the whole chain. A popular way of addressing this is something called 
proof of work. Proof of work is a mechanism which requires you to solve a computationally intensive puzzle in order to calculate the hash of the next block. And if you think about it, if everyone had to work so freaking hard for that many blocks, it's really tough to just fake the genesis block and recalculate the whole chain. Everyone that calculated the new block hash have proven they worked to get it. Implementing proof of work is surprisingly easy. To understand how it works, let's head back to our hash calculating function. Earlier, I told you to ignore this part here. If we want to enable proof of work, we need to set difficulty bits to something greater than zero. If that's the case, we no longer calculate the hash directly, we use the proof of work method instead. This method is defined right below the one we are looking at now. Here are the three important things to understand when implementing proof of work. The first thing is that we add something called nonce to the headers when calculating the hash. This parameter is just an integer which is unknown at the time of hash calculation. But because it's the part of the header, it has an impact on the actual result of the hashing function. The second important thing is that we want our hash to be smaller of some huge s number. But smaller how, you may ask? Well, hash is based basically just a hexadecimal number, so we can convert it to an integer just like this. The third and final important thing to know is how do we determine this number. The easiest target number is just 2 to the power of 256, which to my understanding is greater than all SHA-256 hashes. But then we use the difficulty bits to make this number lower, so the higher that the difficulty bits number is, the lower the target number is gonna be, which means that the scope of valid hashes is going to be narrower. By the way, I know that you're smart and all, but let me just remind you that a small difference in an exponent can make a huge difference in the final result. Right, now that we went through the logic, let me add a bunch of print statements to this piece of code, and let me comment out the part which prints the final form of the chain. Then, the final thing, let me set difficulty bits of our blockchain to something small, let's say 2. Now let's run the script again. As you can see, we don't just take the first hash, we have to try a few times before we get a valid hash. Let's take this block as an example. You can check all the decimal forms of hashes and see that only the last one is actually lower than the target one. So the last hash is actually the one we pick and this here is its hexadecimal representation, which we add to our block. By the way, this process of finding a valid hash in our chain is what's called mining. Now now let me disable the proof of work printing and let me show you just how big of an impact the difficulty bits have. First, let's try adding 5 blocks to our chain with difficulty set to 20. So this took a while. Let's now just increment the difficulty by 1 and let's run the script with this difficulty again. As you can see, the difference is enormous. Hopefully, I demystified the blockchain just a bit. Now, before you order your Lambo, let me just say that there's quite a lot of extra things to do in order to create a practical blockchain. Things to consider are, for example, the peer-to-peer -peer communication, a mechanism of broadcasting new block findings, and then you have to consider what happens if two chain instances find a new block with different valid hashes at the same time. Which one do all other pairs pick? Anyways, that's all. I hope you learned something new, or that you at least had a good time. I just have one wish before you go. Don't create any shitcoins, please. Alright, bye.